For the purposes of this video, I'll be uh, nuking my setup, but before that, let's discuss what tilde does. Uh, for us, whenever you go into a modal, say, bevel, you can actually press tilde and it will change the UI to go into what we call the full UI, which is where it's laying at the bottom and it gives you the most information. You can press tilde and get something called the micro UI follow, which is the micro UI that follows the mouse. And then you can get the micro UI that's static, where it actually stays exactly where you started it. So if I just drop this bevel and I control click bevel to make another bevel, you can see that this bevel started exactly where I left it. However, if I press tilde, you can see that the more expansive help actually tells us that a 60 degree bevel was added. And so while we're moving our mouse, we really can't do a whole lot, but that's because that's exactly what we want. We want a bevel that's unaffected by the current geometry. So by pressing X, we can actually set that bevel to half and drop it, which means the next box cut will be on the next bevel level. However, we'll go ahead and load factory defaults, and I will just go under preferences, and the first thing I'll do is enable hard ops. And with hard ops enabled, we can go at the very bottom, and here's the tilde key map. So if we go ahead and choose to remap this to something like page up and ensure that it's checked, then whenever I go into something like bevel, I can press the page up button and it'll actually change the function of the micro UI. So if you're an international user, this could be to your benefit. But for me personally, I always opt to keep it fairly default. But if you are needing to set it back, you can just set it like so. We don't recommend ever removing anything. The other thing is the control tilde helper. So let's actually click on this and we'll set control page up to be the hotkey probably the most impossible hotkey. And if we press that in 3D view, we can see that that now brings up the helper. So by pressing control page up in this case, I'm able to bring up the helper just exactly as one would need if they're possibly needing to remap this. In my case, I will remap this back to control tilde and we will set this back to tilde as well, just making sure that everything's just right. So in the viewport, we can adjust our bevel, press tilde in order to change what's happening with the micro UI. And then if we need to actually change the micro UI itself, we can do that under UI and the fast UI options. There's actually an option to specifically choose uh, what type of display you have. In fact, I believe it's here, the modal display method. If we hover over it and look at the tool tip, it'll display information telling you where you want the banner. So if we want it to actually stick on initial mouse position, we could set this to three to save our preferences. And then whenever we load bevel, it actually just loads up in this most micro state. So hopefully that gives some insight to the tilde remap and hard ops and how it can be used. There's additional versions uh, or additional uses of tilde that I use personally. For example, I'll select two faces and under select loops, select boundary loop. Usually I'll right click this and actually map this to something else, in which case I will just assign that shortcut to set it to shift tilde. And by pressing shift tilde, I could just quickly grab this and do what I need to it if I were wanting to bevel it and start advancing the form in a different direction. But grabbing things and pressing shift tilde is just one of those things that I do, but it isn't something that we cover with the tool because it does involve you actually going in and manually remapping these things. But when it comes to our control tilde hard ops helper, and the tilde behavior of changing around the fast UI to be following the mouse or staying at the bottom or following the mouse position. That's where tilde comes in handy for you. So hopefully that gives some insight as to our tilde remapper and hard ops and how you can best use it if you're needing to actually change your tilde.